Hello, welcome to Coding is for You. Today we're going to be using Visual Studio Code and we're going to be doing our first Pi program. I'm going to go beyond just doing the hello world. Uh, Python is very valuable in in a lot of scenarios, but I don't happen to use it professionally. I do ASP.NET, C Sharp, Amazon Web Services. I do all kinds of things, but I don't use Python. But I'm going to show you the power of being able to know one language. I can very easily go and learn another language should I need to. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, let's go ahead and go to our folders, and we're going to open a folder, find an empty folder, and I happen to have one called PyClass on my desktop. This way all our files will be in that one nice place. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here to our extensions, and we're going to type in Python, and we're going to get take the first one here, this Python, and install it as an extension into Visual Studio Code. This will help us uh, with some of the libraries and so forth that we need as an extension. The next thing you need to do is go to python.org and download and install Python for your operating system. Now I happen to have Python for Windows and I've already downloaded it and installed it as an executable. Okay, so now we're going to need to set our Python interpreter so Visual Studio Code knows how to bring up IntelliSense and that sort of stuff. So we hit control. Control Shift P for the command palette. You're going to type in Python colon select interpreter and you're going to click on it and you're going to pick the Python that comes up here. Hopefully that's the one you just installed. Okay, now that's going to do some things for us. First of all, let's go and look at our settings.json file and notice that it put in this path to our Python installation executable file. Python is an executable file and you, you have to have this and it has to be pointed to the right thing. If you don't see it here, for some reason this isn't working, go and make sure that this path has that file. Let's, I'll do it for you right now. Okay, I just put in that path and there's my python.exe. That has to match up exactly with this path in your settings. Now, also go into File, Preferences, Settings, go to your Workspace Settings tab here Type in python, python dot python path, and there's a setting here also which should have the same exact thing that you can check it this way as well. So it's kind of more of a graphical user interface way of looking at it. Okay, now that we've gotten this far, let's go to our, our folder here. We're going to click on new file. Let's call it hello world.py, and I pretty sure that the extension is important, py is important. And then let's put in some code that just simply says message equals hello world. Notice that we declaring is very easy. In, in C sharp we would have to put like string message or var message, but here it's just message. And then we're going to print it out and notice when you type it like this, well hopefully Hopefully it, it pops up and gives you some parameter values and kind of tells values and tells you how you can fill it out. So now all we have to do to run this, let's hit Control S to save, right click, and run Python file in terminal, and there it is, hello world. In less than like three or four minutes, we've got our hello world up. Now let's take that a step further and see what else we can do in Python. Hello world has been achieved. Now you can go, you already have right now an environment where you can run anything you want. If you wanted to print this hundreds of times, you could do that. You could change the message. Right click, run in terminal, and there's your multiple hello worlds. But let's take that beyond. Now the first thing I'd want to do, not even knowing Python that well, is how do I do a loop? Instead of writing like this, I want to write it 20 times. How do I do that? Okay, so taking this a step further, I want to know how do you do a loop? And this is exactly how you'd learn Python or any language. Python loop. And right away I see it's doing loops for x in something. Usually a for loop means for something in something for 1 in 20. And so I'm going to go down here where I see a range. This one is going through an array. So we'll go through for apple, banana, and cherry. I can just tell that right away. Let's do for in range of 6. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in here the exact same code, and it's not going to print X, it's going to print MSG. So now it's going to go through this six times, 
and it's going to print hello world six times. So let's right click, run. I wish there was a shortcut. And it wrote it six times right here. All right, so what if we wanted to do it 16 times? Right click, run in terminal 16 times. All right, that's easy enough. Now, I think Python is an indented language. So, you know, in C Sharp, you would have brackets around your all your chunk of code for that foreign. But in Python, you're going to have indented. So anything that happens here, let's do print blah. Let's see if that works. See, I don't even know. I'm just right click and run. See? So it did do that. So it did hello world blah, hello world blah, hello world blah. It went this line, this line 16 times. Let's bring that back down a little bit. Okay, so what did we want to do now? Maybe what I'd like to do is find out how do I declare a function and just call it. Let's divide our code up a little bit and let's go back and say, this is exactly how you do it, Python define function. There it is right in the top. W3 schools. Here's a function. Define my function. Print. So copy it. So this would be a separate little thing that you could just call from anywhere within your code. Let's create a function down here called say blah six times. Okay? And now I'm going to copy the actual code. And so it's going to run this once, but it's going to go six times. I think you have to do this. There. So, message. It doesn't know what message is, does it? We're going to have to define that in the function. Actually, to be honest, I kind of prefer the brackets because then I know for sure where things are happening. So I uh, say blah six time. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's just give it a try. Let's go back maybe and check before we run it. How do you call it? Well, you define it, and it looks like they call it after they define it. I wonder if you have to define it first. Only one way to find out. See, it's not defined. Because we called it before it was defined, you have to define things at the top and call them at the bottom. Now I bet it works. Right click, run. There we go. So what's cool about a function is you can put all kinds of code in it and just call it once and you don't even have to worry about see what'll happen is that'll be somewhere else and you'll be like you'll call it like this and you won't even know what's going on above there. Okay, so that's easy enough. We're doing loops. What about an if statement? Learn one language and you'll you can learn any language. Okay, simple enough. If B is greater than A and it has a colon, that's something good to know. So as it's going through this range, if x is greater than 2, then let's go ahead and print. I'm going to get rid of blah. I'm going to get rid of message. And I'm going to add print. I'm going to print the number, too, that it's on. So that way I know how many times, I don't know if it's starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, see? I don't know that. So let's call say blah six time. Let's run it. Print blah, something's wrong. I think I need to indent, I think. There we go. So what happened was it's going through here six times. One, two. Only if x is greater than three did it come in here and it printed blah. And so after the third one, it printed blah, three, blah, four, blah, five. Okay, that's a little confusing. So if x, all right, so if you put a pound sign, it will comment the code out and it won't run. Okay, so what should happen is shift tab. This should print the numbers over and over and over. Let's click it. Let's run. And when we, it does start with zero. So, okay. So what you do is after a little research, you do this. So I think you're saying from one to six. 
so it has a range of one to six, not zero to six. That's the default run Python. So there it goes blah one, blah two, blah three. See, now I gave it a range and I believe if you add a third number, it will increment by that much. Let's run it. So it went one, two, three, four, five, and it quit. So this is start number, this is how far it goes, and this is how much it increments. And its def default is one. Okay, so we have our if statement, we have a loop. What else can we do? Well, now you can start writing tons of programs with different, different messages and sort of, that sort of thing. So the last thing I'm gonna do is something useful. Let's figure out how do you open a file, write to a file, read from a file, and delete a file in Man, it is easy. All right, let's just see if this works. Now, I'm going to, I'm gonna get rid of this and just see if it works. Well, the question is, where does this go? C colon back, backslash temp. Can I do that? You have to be careful. All right, so I'm gonna try to write this file here it's got a squiggly line. I wonder what that means. Did it work? Only one way to find out. C temp. What do we call it? Demo file. There it is right there. Now the file has one more line. How cool is that? Now let's do this. What we're doing is we're opening a file and we're writing to it. Let, how did we do that loop before? This way. For x in range oh, 1 through 6, uh, the file's already open. We just want to write to it one time. So now it should write to that file five times. One, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what happens. Right click, run. Open the file in the temp. Nope, it didn't work. Okay, I forgot something simple. There needs to be a colon there. Now let's just run it. Right click, run, check the file. There. Now it wrote it across. I didn't do a, a line return or a carriage return. See how you just learn and debug. Run. Now we look in temp and the files. Uh, demo file one is still there. Why is that? Because I have it open probably. Okay, so finally let's do one little thing to make something useful. Let's create a function. Uh, And then let's call it main. So down here we run main, and it, whatever we do here will run after we call it down here. But let's define a math. At, let's define add two numbers. And then we'll put it x and y. And then let's see. add two numbers, we'll actually call it, and we'll pass in a three and a five, we should get eight. Sum, I kind of like how you can declare a variable just so easily, you just write it. We call main and then we need to write it, so let's print sum. Now, my idea is, wait, uh, how do you return a value? Okay, so returning a value is just what you think. X plus Y. It seems too easy, doesn't it? Well, I, I like Python for it just seems so easy just to get things up and running once you know how to. So what we're doing here is we defined a main, and it's, it's going to create a variable, and it's going to call this function. It's going to pass in a 3 and a 5, and it's going this function is going to return 
3 plus 5, and then that's going to go back into sum, and then this is going to print the sum. So it's going from here to, to here to here to here to here, back to here, back to here, back to here, back to here. And that might seem a little confusing if you just started programming, but you will get used to it. Right click, run terminal, and I have invalid <laughs> syntax. Okay, I probably forgot a colon, colon. That uh, seems to be a thing I do. All right, add two numbers is not defined. Of course, you can tell by the color. See, add two numbers, right click. This is, it's why programming is so easy. You just keep trying and trying. So look, there's my eight, I got my number. You could make all kinds of math in here. Like if you wanted to create, I don't know, number of students in the class minus, you could have number of students minus the, and then the number of absent students and then the, the grades or something. You could do all kinds of personal programs this way and get whatever you wanted. Let's try adding five and 1,000.5. Now, using a floating point number right there, I'm curious, is it gonna work? One, five and 105 and you get 105.5. How, what if it's like really long? What does it do? Run, there we go. So it handles floating point numbers. In, in C Sharp, you have to be very specific. Anyway, this is just getting you up and running and playing around, and I'm showing you how you learn. What you need to do if you're learning is pick something, pick a task. I want to do this, and then find out how to do that. So the question is, how do we open a file? Well, we did that. How do we define a function? Well, we did that. How do you return a value? How to pass a value to a function? How do you get it back? How do you call it? Now, the only thing we haven't done yet is to debug. Okay, that wasn't very hard. So what you do is you, it was kind of hard because I'm like, where do you put the, the point? You put the point right here and let's put a point right there and we can step through it. So let's hit, we went to the debugger over here. We hit debug. All right, now if we do this, we're going to step now, step over means we're going to skip all of this function and just step over it. Watch what happens. It'll skip step over it. Well, I had a breakpoint, so it stepped into it. So then you can hover your mouse over the numbers here, and there's our numbers, x plus y. There's your numbers. And then we're going to step over again, over, and it's going to print, and that's how it works. So debugging is just as easy as any other environment. Put your breakpoints here and go to the debugger and hit debug. All right, guys, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you like this. I, I did have to struggle. I'm not an expert, but I kind of showing you how to learn. You have to teach yourself and 99% um, of what you learn is online ready for you. You can even download a pre-made program and just put it on and just copy and paste in it, which should just run fine. Um, look at the descriptions below. I keep the books that I like. My favorite books are in the links below. Take a look at them. I'm an Amazon associate. They help me out if you buy it or link to it and buy it. So anyway, thank you. Hope you like this.